Hi, I'm Max Ada from Juggernaut Training Systems. We're here to talk to you about developing leg strength for weightlifting. First and foremost, the biggest question is, why do you need leg strength in weightlifting? It seems like a kind of a simple question, and the answer is somewhat simple, but can be uh, different for different people. You need leg strength in weightlifting because the implement you're lifting is extremely heavy, and as you progress in sport mastery, you need to lift a heavier and heavier barbell to become successful. Absolute strength plays a large role in this, and leg strength, the, the musculature of the legs are what does most of the work primarily in the snatch and the clean and jerk. We know we need leg strength, so how much leg strength is necessary? Again, the answer for every individual is different. Some lifters are very, very efficient with their technique. They need less leg strength than a lifter who's inefficient with their technique. As a general rule, you're going to need, obviously, more leg strength than as an absolute number than you would in the clean and jerk. If you clean and jerk 100 kilograms, you're gonna need to squat at least more than 100 kilograms to be successful. Uh, there's plenty of information that's been passed around as to what is the optimal amount of leg strength. And these can be somewhat misleading in the, there's an idea that, you know, if you need 120% of your clean and jerk or 135% of your clean and jerk, in the back squat, that's enough. Every lifter is different based on different leverages, different technical skills, their style of lifting, what they do, how they lift, it's gonna influence each person differently. So while you may have one lifter who has very long legs or very short legs, they might excel in the squat exercise. Another lifter may be very, very difficult. The squat may be very challenging for them. And because of this, to know exactly how much leg strength is necessary is somewhat of a, not a mystery, but it's, it's a blurry area. When training for weightlifting, we're not looking to hit a specific target number. Uh, we can use those target numbers as guidelines, knowing that if you're squatting in excess of your clean and jerk by 100 kilograms, it's probably not necessary to spend much more time on developing leg strength. If you're squatting five kilos over your best clean and jerk, you're probably gonna have to need to increase that at some point in time. In the same vein as to how much leg strength is necessary, we can look at my personal example. My best result in the front squat at 80 kilograms was 240 kilos. That same day, my best clean and jerk result was 155 kilos. Clearly a humongous discrepancy between leg strength and clean and jerk. Other lifters the same with the same clean and jerk might have a front squat of sub 200 kilos, maybe even you know 180. Uh, and some lifters can even clean almost the same amount of weight as they can front squat. So when we're looking at how much is necessary, we have to look at what effect it has on the lifter, which brings us to goals and objectives. What are we trying to achieve by developing leg strength? Does the lifter need to gain body weight? Are they moving into the next weight class? Does the lifter need to increase absolute strength? Are they lacking strength significantly enough to actually improve the results in the lifts, will increasing the leg strength improve their technical efficiency, the technical mastery? So looking at these different goals, we can then break down how we're going to approach that. If someone needs to gain body weight and increase absolute strength, we're gonna use different methods than if someone needs to increase leg strength or maintain leg strength because their legs are plenty strong enough. Whereas if someone needs to improve technical mastery but doesn't need to gain body weight, and perhaps their, uh, their absolute strength in the legs is, is sufficient, then we'll use other methods. Looking at the methods, we know from plenty of experience that higher repetitions, lower frequency is gonna be used, is gonna suit itself better to building muscle mass and gaining body weight. Higher repetitions, lower frequency training is gonna be a little bit easier far from a competition. It makes much more sense to put it as far from a competition as possible because those methods are not gonna lend themselves well to being specific and transferring well to the sport of lifting a, an object one time, right? Doing sets of eight and 10, 15, 16 weeks before a meet is much more logical than doing it, you know, four weeks out. You're not gonna, you're not gonna move a weight class four weeks before the meet. On the other side of the coin, Increasing absolute strength and training with very heavy weights to maintain absolute strength on this end of the spectrum with higher frequency and lower repetitions would make less sense doing that 
far from a competition. 12 weeks out from a meet, you don't need to have a maximum single in the squat. It's not gonna have high transference or it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be the best use of your time, right? That's gonna be better suited to being done just before a competition or within the, you know, the last four to six weeks of a meet. In terms of improving technical mastery, some lifters may lack the control to use their legs properly in the lift. Some variations of squatting, some kind of squatting or training for the squat can, can fix this and can alleviate some technical issues. That can be done you know, with different methods, medium range weights, closer to meets, closer to the competition, or it can be done throughout the whole training cycle as a way of establishing consistent technique through the whole training cycle. Some special considerations to talk about with different lifters, and we'll cover a lot of the actual exercises in the second part of this, but special considerations for some lifters. Some lifters anatomically have a very challenging time staying upright in the squat. We obviously, we know from the, the principles of specificity, we want the lifts, the exercises, that support the competitive exercise to be as similar as possible. Being upright is gonna be a component of that. Using near maximum weights is a component of that. Some lifters can't maintain this posture. They're not comfortable, as you would say, in those, in those positions. Physically, anatomically, they, they can't do it. They still need leg strength. So there are exercises and variations and different methods that may work well for them to try and circumvent that problem because while we're essentially always talking about squatting when we're talking about weightlifting and training leg strength. Squatting isn't the only exercise that a lifter can do to improve their leg strength. There's, there's many other variations, many other exercises that can help build leg strength without having to force lifters to do an exercise that may not produce much results. Especially for lifters in the special considerations that may have a difficult time improving their, their squat by just squatting, we have exercises variations of things that will actually circumvent that problem so we don't need to waste time doing something that doesn't produce results for them. Another point to be made, goals and objectives define what we're trying to achieve. When we know what the goal is, we know what tool to select, what method to select, how to get there. One thing to be cautious of, especially in weightlifting, is chasing down something that's unnecessary chasing down unnecessary leg strength when it doesn't transfer well to the lifter. Chasing down a 250 kilogram squat for a 56 kilo lifter that may just be unnecessary. Spending too much training volume, too much training time, and too much effort trying to develop more and more leg strength at the expense of being able to train the more specific, more important exercises, the snatch and clean and jerk, and their variations, is a detrimental process. It's easy for lifters to assume that if they just continue to improve their leg strength, then their results will climb and climb and climb. But we know from countless experience and countless time that this has a, an end, right? There's a point of diminishing returns for that process. That point's different for everybody. Some lifters have an incredible, actual, absolute value to their leg strength. We've seen lifters that squat 400 kilograms, Mart Seam of Estonia squatted 400 kilos, you see on YouTube, um, but I don't believe he's ever won the World Championships or won the Olympic Games, right? Clean Jerk's about 248. I don't know if we can be certain that someone like Badad Salimi or any of the other champions have squatted the same 400 kilos or as easily or have devoted as much time to it, but it's somewhat unlikely. Uh, in my personal experience, I had never heard of any of the Bulgarian lifters claiming squats uh, uh, even in the range of 400 kilos. Uh, and they had all exceeded 248 clean and jerks, the supers. Uh, so it's, it's something to be aware of. Everyone's different too. We know from individual differences in lifters that some lifters are very adept at squatting. If you have a situation where a lifter is anatomically built well for the squat, they excel at it. It doesn't require a huge amount of energy to recover from and they do it because they like it a lot, you may have a lifter who has a gigantic squat and you know, subpar results in the Olympic lifts. Uh, I'm a great example of that. I had very large squat relative to my lifts. Just as a, a warning or a caution, it's chasing big numbers in the squat is not the sport of weightlifting. Developing leg strength for weightlifting is about making a weightlifter better at weightlifting. It's a means to an end improving the squat as a means to improve the snatch and the clean and jerk.
Team Juggernaut Weightlifting is a program that we've established that is set out the goal of unifying all the top lifters we can, trying to bring them into a unified club where all of us are working towards the same goals. And that goal is to put people on different international teams and then score the highest possible placings in international meetings. Getting onto a team with a real team atmosphere, it's gonna be fun. One, it's gonna be a lot more fun than trying to do everything on my own. Being able to fight for team titles, just helping the rest of the athletes. As far as Team Juggernaut Weightlifting, I, I feel that we can become an American Open Championship team and be the go-to resource for anything weightlifting related in the United States.